Imagine you're watching someone wear different colored hats every day and you suspect their mood influences their choice. But here's the catch. You don't know the probabilities. You don't know how likely they are to stay sad or become happy. And you don't know how each mood affects their hat selection. So the question becomes, can we learn these hidden patterns just by watching the hat colors over time? This is exactly what the Bohm Welch algorithm does. And it's going to blow your mind how it figures everything out from scratch. Let me set up the problem properly so we're on the same page. In our previous videos, we always assumed we knew all the numbers in our hidden Markov model. We knew the initial probabilities, the transition probabilities between mood states and the emission probabilities for hat colors given each mood. But in real life, we almost never have this luxury. And instead, what we typically have is just a sequence of observations, like someone wearing red, then green, then blue, then red again. And from this data alone, we need to figure out all those probability tables that make the model work. Now, you might be thinking, this sounds impossible because we can't see the hidden states. So how can we learn anything about them? And this is where the brilliance of the Baum Welch algorithm comes in. The algorithm uses a technique called expectation maximization, or EM for short, which is based on a simple but powerful idea. We start with a random guess for all our probabilities, then we use those guesses to figure out what the hidden states probably were, and then we use those probable hidden states to update our probability guesses to better match the data. And we keep doing this back and forth until everything converges to a stable solution. Let me walk you through how this actually works step by step. The algorithm has two main phases that repeat over and over. And the first phase is called the expectation step or E step, where we compute the expected values of being in each state at each time point using the forward backward algorithm that we covered in the last video. Remember, that forward backward gives us gamma t of i, which is the probability of being in state i at time t, given all our observations and our current parameter estimates, and it also gives us something called xi, which is the probability of being in state i at time t and state j at time t plus 1. And these probabilities are crucial because they tell us how much each transition and each emission contributed to generating our observed data. The second phase is the maximization step or M step, where we use these expected values to update our model parameters to maximize the likelihood of observing our data. For the initial state probabilities, we simply set them equal to gamma 1 of i, which is the probability of starting in state i on the first observation. For the transition probabilities from state i to state j, we take the sum of xi for all time steps and divide by the sum of gamma for state i across all time steps, which essentially counts how often we transitioned from i to j relative to how often we were in state i. For the emission probabilities, we sum up the gamma values at times when we observed a particular symbol and divide by the total gamma values for that state, which tells us how often that state generated that particular observation. Let's see this in action with a concrete example using our mood and hat color scenario. Suppose we observe someone wearing red, green and blue hats over three days and we want to learn the parameters of our hidden Markov model from scratch. We start by randomly initializing all our probabilities. Maybe we say there's a 50-50 chance of starting in either mood, equal chances of transitioning between any states, and equal chances of emitting any hat color from any mood. And yes, these guesses are probably completely wrong, but that's okay because the algorithm will fix them. In the first e step, we run forward backward using our current parameter guesses to compute gamma and psi for all time points. And even though our parameters are random, forward backward still gives us some probability distribution over the hidden states based on what we've observed. Then in the m step, we count up these probabilities to update our parameters. If gamma tells us 
we are probably in the sad state more often when we saw blue hats, then we'll increase the emission probability of blue given sad. And if Psi tells us we probably transitioned from happy to sad frequently, then we'll increase the transition probability. After this first iteration, our parameters are already better than random because they are now based on actual patterns in our observation sequence. And then we repeat the process. We run forward backward again with our updated parameters to get new gamma and psi values. And these new values will be different because our parameters changed. And then we update our parameters again based on these new expected values. We keep cycling through E step and M step. And with each iteration, our parameters get closer and closer to values that truly really explain our observed data. And eventually, the algorithm converges, meaning the parameters stop changing significantly between iterations. And at that point, we found a good set of parameters that fit our observations. Now, here's something important to understand. The Baum-Welch algorithm is guaranteed to improve the likelihood of the data with each iteration, or at least not make it worse, which means it will always converge to some solution, but there's a catch. It might converge to a local maximum rather than the global maximum, which means the solution depends on where we started. This is why in practice, people often run Baum-Welch multiple times with different random initializations and pick the solution that gives the highest likelihood. And this helps ensure we find a good solution, even if we can't guarantee it's the absolute best. The key insight that makes Baum-Welch so powerful is that even though we can't directly observe the hidden states, we can still learn about them through their effects on the observable data. And by iteratively refining our understanding of both the hidden state probabilities and the model parameters, we gradually uncover the hidden structure that generated our observations. So, to recap, the Baum-Welch algorithm learns hidden Markov model parameters from observation sequences using an iterative process that alternates between estimating hidden states with forward-backward and updating parameters to better explain the data. And this process continues until convergence giving us a trained model that captures the underlying patterns in our data. And that's basically it for this series. I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button if you did, share your thoughts in the comments below, and subscribe to be up to date with the content I create on this channel. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.